uh, welcome to our program. I'm Roberto Miranda for Congregation Lion of Judah, and I have with me Dr. Doug Birdsall. Welcome, Doug, Thank to you. our program. Uh, Doug has a huge experience in Christian service, uh, serving many years in Japan as a missionary and the director of uh, Asian Access uh, there, uh, missions work to Asian people and uh, all over Asia, really, and now serves as a executive director and has been the founder of uh, Civilitas, an organization dedicated to promoting uh, civil dialogue between different perspectives. And Doug, we uh, know that we inhabit right now a very divided uh, America. Mm -hmm. And perhaps when you started Civilitas, it, you would have been surprised even mm -hmm. to the level that we have come right. of division. Mm -hmm. So Civilitas probably has a lot more currency mm -hmm. and, and uh, importance even now. Tell us a little, bit, a little bit about the organization, what you do there, sure. and what you're seeking to accomplish. Through. Right. Well, Roberto, you're absolutely right. When we began just a year ago, we could not have anticipated the level of incivility in public discourse. But it's precisely because of that that I think that the church and the gospel has such a great contribution to make. We're hearing a lot about fear in our culture, about anger, about loss. But the scripture teaches us that the Spirit has not given us an attitude of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. And so I think that we can be people in a position to be reconcilers and healers. The vision actually for Civilitas began in 2009. Uh, I was working with the Lausanne movement at the time. We were preparing for a great congress in Cape Town. I was in India meeting with Christian leaders and one evening as we were having dinner, uh, one of the men who was talking about the seeming decline of our culture and they also wondered, what is the, what is the, the role of the church? Is the, does the church have any contribution to make? Well, one of them, a man named Shaker, a very gifted pastor of a great Pentecostal church there in Mumbai, he said, when America's gone, the world will miss her. And the way he said it, it wasn't satirical, it wasn't angry, it wasn't prophetic, it was just almost a sense of inevitability. Mm. Um, but I thought, of course we understand the rise and fall of nations. But I really have a sense that our country, with all the challenges that we're facing, has actually been reconstituted the last 50 years. I think immigration is one of the greatest things that has happened to this country. Because we now have a culture that looks more like Revelation 7 than anything in history, every language, nation, tribe, and tongue. And as a person of Hispanic, Latino heritage, um, you know how much energy the Latino community has brought to this country. And the vast majority are Christians, whether they're Catholics or Pentecostals or Evangelicals. Likewise, the Asian American immigration uh, over 34% self-identifying as believers. Uh, the new Africans who have come, uh, disproportionately graduates of Christian schools. So I see a great new opportunity, but we need to come together to, to model what it means to be a part of the new humanity in a culture which has experienced a disintegration. So Civilitas is really uh, here to try to, to work for cohesion. Well, it's interesting to me that uh, the origin of uh, your vision for civility and so on, uh, you mentioned that, that the dialogue with uh, Indian pastors and mm -hmm. that pastor saying, you know, when America is gone. I, I, I see some interesting uh, illuminating details. I think the, one of the things is uh, the fact that you have this other world, India, for example, mm -hmm. or Latin America or Africa, serving as a starting point for insight into our own nation. Mm -hmm. And this growing agency, this growing influence of the third, so-called third world. Mm -hmm. And uh, that coupled with America's seeming descent. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, it's declining power as a determining voice in international dialogue, mm -hmm. international affairs. Mm -hmm. And that generating a sense of insecurity mm -hmm. here in America, mm -hmm. which seems to be one of the reasons why, you know, this dialogue has become so polarized. The mm -hmm. fact that there's so much insecurity. We, we see the world becoming a lot more complex. These uh, cultures coming here to America, gaining more influence. And at the same time, uh, a whole sector of America declining in its own influence, mm -hmm. its own sense of security. Mm -hmm. This working class, this white working class, mm -hmm. for example, that feels that, uh, you know, yes, uh, the, these groups are gaining influence, but it's at our expense. Mm -hmm. uh, the religious uh, groups that mm -hmm. until now have been ascendant and determining here in America, conservative Christians, for example, feeling, you know, yeah, now perhaps there are other visions of Christianity, but that's uh, taking place at our 
expense. Mm -hmm. And so there's this, uh, this uh, sense of insecurity coupled, I think, with a sense of impotence mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like we're seeing the rug being pulled out from under our feet. We have tried to do everything we can mm -hmm. to stem that and to find some sort of balance, and yet it seems to be impossible. We, we find ourselves with less and less of a voice, mm -hmm. less and less of an opportunity to determine our own destiny. And mm -hmm. I think that creates a sense of impotence, which mm -hmm. then leads to anger, mm -hmm. which leads to the kind of uh, conflictive dialogue right. that we have, yeah. shrill, just discourse. It doesn't mm -hmm. get anywhere. Right. And right now we're looking, we're looking at the details of our culture. You're, you're talking about some of the particulars of 21st century America. But as men who are also theologians, people who love and teach the Bible, let's just step back for a second and think about what God is doing in history. You think of the creation, then the fall, and then, of course, the tragedy of the Tower of Babel. And I never realized how tragic that was until I went to Japan and started to learn a new language <laughs> and realized this is the consequence. But the, the Tower of Babel was really a scattering of the nations, and there was confusion. Pentecost is bringing back together the nations, and everybody heard as if they were being taught in their own language. Mm -hmm. In a sense, it's a foretaste of heaven. And here we are, the age of the spirit, the age of the church. We're a part of God's recreative, redemptive work. And we know that someday all things will be made new. That's our great hope. But in between time, we're working out the implications of what it means to be uh, the, the new Adam, uh, the, the new community. So, yes, there are these, um, these issues that are creating fear and anger and division. But no matter what camp you're a part of, people don't like it. I mean, children who grow up in a home where there's strife and there's yelling back and forth, you know, we don't, you don't know if the mother is right or the father is right or whoever is in the house, um, but people do not like the cacophony and the chaos. And so I think people are looking, not only in our country, but in the world, uh, for someone or some group or some idea that will help us get through. This is where I think the church and I think the church in our country at this time has a great gift to offer to our society and the world.